Now there's the line of data, 7B62. Line 22, we're going to 7B62, magnetic 3D edges, plasma transports, 5G velocity. Here's our alien radio signal. And this is about edge resonant magnetic perturbations, fields, text or PDF results. And it's wild data. Okay, so um, I was working on this May 18th. Today's June 24th. So we're talking about septic splitting. Um, the previous video was this one, line 22, with the 7B61 homoclinic bifurcation, septic splitting, well study. Quote PDF files from results on the blog. The influence of three-dimensional stochastic magnetic boundaries on plasma edge transport and the resulting plasma wall interaction. Here's our list of scientists that worked on this project, and there's many. Um, they're from the Textor teams, D3-D, -D, Textor teams, um, Germany, General Atomics from San Diego, USA, and California. And then we have Liverpool, uh, not Livermore, California, Germany, Tennessee, USA, New York, these guys are all over the place. France! And we got Albuquerque, New Mexico. So, yeah, it's from all sorts of different uh, laboratories and stuff there. So, it's dx.doi.org is the link. Three dimensional 3D features of plasma edge profiles and wall interaction patterns induced by edge resonant magnetic perturbation fields. RMP are discussed comparing Textor and D3-D. We show that the scrape off layer SOL profiles and DK links depend on <coughs> the edge safety factor. The RMP base mode as well as on the plasma rotation. So there's the keyword there, rotation, because we want the spaceship to rotate. We're using a type of plasma that mixes liquid argon gas with neutrinos, leptons, and um, there's all sorts of formulas for this uh, gas mixture, particle mixture that's going to go in the spaceship to help it rotate and it's going to be recycled. It's a type of fuel that doesn't burn but it does uh, create power. Okay, Power for movement like a jet propulsion. So the plasma rotation during RMP application that's in line 17 to 22 by the way. Um, by the 3D perturbation fields this is compatible with channeling of particle and heat efflux along open perturbed field lines in the very edge of the plasma boundary into a completely rearranged helically straighted 3D diverter footprint. Oh, I have no idea what that means. Okay, the distribution of the measured diverter heat and particle fluxes at D3-D match the vacuum model magnetic footprint. Okay, so we're looking um, a, a vacuum, we're looking at magnetic, again, this is talking about particle fluxes, so I feel like this is going to be part of the Tevatron ring design and what you're going to do with it, okay? Footprint topology in L mode with in H mode, the striation width exceeds the model footprint width by 15 to 30%. This 3D structure of the measured heat and particle flux results in a new situation. <coughs> For the material erosion properties initial quantification of the net erosion within the 3D footprint shows in L mode a 50% decrease of the chemical erosion yield and evidence for a comparably small 15-20% to 20 increase in the physical sputtering. Extrapolation of these findings to ITER by vacuum modeling of the magnetic footprint for the actual ELM control. Coils show a similar vacuum magnetic footprint topology is found at D3, well, three lines, dash D during RMP ELM suppression. However, the open field lines escape the CFC covered I turf diverter area, potentially transferring net erosion. Characteristics from the CFC domain onto the tungsten, including so far unconsidered heat and particle loads on the sensitive material. Figures and tables from this article. Okay. Nice pretty colors we got here. We got a pole idle angle and we have a radius on the right. Let's see if we make this just a wee bit bigger for our video here. There we go. Okay. So we have laminator flux tubes. You got erotic fingers, unperturbed LCFS, 
So this is a Techstar DED Target ALT2 limiter. Erotic zone, remnant islands, and island chains. Looks like uh, magma with uh, volcanoes. <laughs> Scholastic layer with remnant islands, separatrix manifolds, lobes, laminar flux tubes, D3D diverter, and it's got the height Z and the shortest L radius. Separate. Um, okay, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna shrink it back again so we can fit it into the video. There we go. Okay, let's scroll down here. Perturbed magnetic boundary layer as coded, colored field line connection links plot for texture. Left side in D3T, right side with the separatrix lobes as simplifying abbreviation for the lobes of the invariant manifolds of the separatrix. Okay, here's another set of diagrams. Hmm. It says fit error before RMP, fit error with RMP, fit error with after RMP. <coughs> On the left it says density decay length. Temperature decay length, safety factor QA, okay, this is A and B, and it's got numbers 2.5 to 4.5, and then 0 to 100. Edge safety factor dependence of the scrape off layer decay length, with the symbols, I forget what the symbol meant, for the texture edge plasma and with our RMP field applied. For interpretation of color in this figure, the reader is referred to the web version of this article. So here's more diagrams, gradient length, um, no RMP, RMP low rotation, RMP high rotation, and, and it's got the different things there. Okay, kind of got a triangle thing. <coughs> Edge profile, plus minus two centimeters in outward from the separatrix decay lengths with RMP at the close, last closed flux surface, LCFS, and the scrape off layer SOL of D3D. Depicted are gradient lengths for L mode high field side limited plasmas. For non RMP case, RMP case at low rotation, 15 kilometers per second in the edge, and high rotation of 20 kilometers per second. Error bars from fitting the. I don't know if that's kilometers per second, I'm just guessing. Okay, sorry. Error bars from fitting the gradient lengths are within the marker size. And then we got emissions. 10 to the power of minus 2 counts with some other formula there. Mm, field line penetration, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so comparison of the heat flux. There we go. You got your heat fluxes here. Red and C2 emission with the symbolism blue profile used as measure for the ion influx. At the D3D with the local field line. Again, you have almost like the Higgs signal going up there, a bunch of little mountains. So there's some sort of power flux there. <coughs> Penetration depth profile gray for AL mill discharge, a discharge with ELM suppression, but no s strong TE drop. Here the blue curve represents the DA emission for that B. Where's B? Oh, B. Okay, so this is A, this is B, this is C. There you go. Okay. Um, C was the discharge at the optimum resonance spot, which is that C is the bottom one there. Discharge at the optimum resonance spot with thermal transport. Hey, transport. Enhancement and robust ELM suppression. The x-axis depicts the distance AS wall along the wall from the strike point. <coughs> so that talks about transport. Now we have increase of relative C2 emission, chemical erosion yield Y. Chemical erosion yield and relative increase of C2 emission at D3D. At the location of the PPI cap, or PPL cap maybe, I don't know. Compared to our reference volume, see text for details. Hollow circles show data from phases where more than one single lobe touched the PP. I don't know if it's an I or an L. Cap during the measurement time. For interpretation of this color, blah, 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 go to the figure web. Yes, okay. Here we go. Square wave current distribution. Cool. I love the colors you guys used. Tungsten tiles and graphite tiles. So we were talking about tungsten and graphite to use in the wafer. 
um, when you're using the core area, building the communications and the electricity uh, generating signals, um, it uses a graphite or tungsten type of wafer, so I would use this data for that. Distance from OSP, ISP, magnetic ITER diverter footprint pattern with N equals 4RMP spectrum applied with different current distributions to enhance the stochastic layer width. This toroidal angle talks about the connection length and the distance from OSP ISP. Okay, that's what's in the graphs there. Upper row shows the footprint for an inner strike line. Okay, that's your upper row. The lower row shows the footprint of an outer strike line. They're kind of going in opposite directions to each other too. A square wave current distribution with a stochastic layer with 0.25 in normalized toroidal, toroidal, the toroidal flux is shown on the left side and a cosine-like current distribution with a reduced stochastic layer width of 0.16 is considered on the right side. Okay, so you can see one's bigger than the other. www.sciencedirect.com, there's the link. Keyword separatrix splitting is going to go to SAM4. It's a pulse sequence, or I, I mean calling it SAM14. Is a pulse sequence to Pisima. I don't know if it's SAMP4. I don't know. Okay, thanks for watching.